so I'm, I am, um, I'm just uh, compelled to say what large shoes we all have to fill as uh, in the urban studies program, um, in the public policy program, as university educators, as, as government workers in order to, uh, to live up to some of the vision that has gone into building our region. Um, and, uh, and so in order to move forward towards at least trying, um, it's my pleasure to introduce my big boss, President Andrew Petter of Simon Fraser University. Well, thank you very much, Meg. It's a real pleasure to be here for the fourth annual Rethinking the Region Conference. And let me just start by expressing appreciation to uh, some of those who've been responsible for mounting this conference. Uh, first of all, co-hosts uh, SFU's Urban Studies Program and our School of Public Policy. Uh, conference partner, the City of uh, New Westminster, of course. The Real Estate Foundation of BC and the Fraser Valley Real Estate Board, who have provided generous support. Uh, organizers, uh, Professors Meg Holden of Urban Studies and Josh Gordon of Public Policy. And a team of engaged students who I I was greeted by as I arrived, and I assume you were probably too, whose efforts have really helped in planning and preparing what is clearly an outstanding program uh, for the day. And I'd like to thank all of you as well for giving up a Saturday to come out and have a really important discussion and to participate uh, in this conference and, and, and wrestle with some of these issues regarding regional governance. Uh, as I assume you know, this event coincides with the 50th anniversary of the regional district model in BC, the 20th anniversary of the Livable Region Strategic Plan. It also happens to coincide with the 50th anniversary year of Simon Fraser University. So it's an exciting time to be looking at these issues for all involved. As a university with three campuses in three municipalities in Metro Vancouver, uh, SFU has more than an academic interest, you should pardon the expression, in this region and in issues of regional governance. And that interest goes beyond ensuring that regional planning and development recognize the needs and aspirations of our university community as important as those are in areas of transportation and housing and infrastructure. But because we have made it our mission to be Canada's engaged university, we really see ourselves as playing a much more dynamic role than a traditional university. We see ourselves very much as an anchor institution that contributes to the social, economic, environmental, and cultural well-being of the communities we serve. And that commitment lies very much at the heart of our strategic vision to be that engaged university. It informs everything we do, from putting students in, in community with them par paralleled opportunities to contribute to and benefit from community-based learning, and participate in mounting conferences like this, to encouraging our researchers to mobilize their research and knowledge to support uh, economic objectives and to address social and environmental concerns, to leverage our strengths to foster community building through the delivery of programs, including conferences like this one, and through the development and use of our facilities. And this notion of an anchor institution, I think, is becoming increasingly important. Uh, particularly as uh, companies are a little less stable in their commitments and contributions to communities, as governments are constrained in their financial resources, we need other institutions to step up and play that role in supporting civil society, in providing the social uh, infrastructure. And universities, I think, have a unique opportunity to do so. And I hope you agree with me that SFU has been playing a unique and important role in that regard. Our three campuses do play, I think, a significant and positive role in shaping, shaping and strengthening this region. Just across the bridge at Surrey City Center, there's a wonderful example of suburban transformation that's been catalyzed to a large extent by SFU's Surrey campus and the support we've received from provincial governments to establish that campus. In Vancouver, SFU's facilities and programs have helped to revitalize and enrich the urban core. And on Burnaby Mountain, we're developing a satellite community, University, uh, and it's already been recognized very much as a global leader in demonstrating livability and sustainability. With Canada's first, livel, first uh, uh, living building, we hope to soon be designated in our childcare facility. All of this gives us a huge interest and major stake as a partner as well as a player in issues of regional governance. And for all of these reasons and more, SFU is proud to be part of this conversation, and I'm excited for the new ideas that you may generate today. 
So I wish you a successful day. I look forward to hearing about the fruits of your discussion. I hope they include a gondola up to Burnaby Mountain, because that is certainly a, an idea whose time has come. But uh, I will now uh, uh, exercise the pleasure of introducing the mayor of New Westminster, Jonathan Code, who's not only a mayor, but I'm very proud to say is a recent graduate of SFU's Master of Urban Studies program. He took his alma mater's engaged vision model really to heart, uh, by getting involved in municipal politics and becoming Metro Vancouver's youngest mayor in 2014. His graduate research is being applied to guide New Westminster and other cities into developing more mixed-use, transit-oriented neighborhoods and more affordable rental housing. So I'm very proud uh, to introduce, and I invite you to join with me in welcoming an engaged SFU alumnus, Mayor Jonathan Cote. Well, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's my pleasure to be here and uh, certainly really happy to, to be here as, as the host of, uh, of today's event. And as was mentioned, uh, I have a special connection to, to Simon Fraser University. Uh, a year and a half ago, I was elected mayor of the city of New Westminster, uh, but one year and eight months ago, I was defending my thesis up at, at SFU in, in Urban Studies. And uh, it, it's been an incredible experience to, to really kind of take, uh, take the learning up at SFU and uh, be thrown right into, into the mix as, as the mayor of, uh, of New Westminster. Uh, I think SFU really over the years has, has really pushed the boundaries as to their role in the conversation about, uh, about the region, about urban planning, and has, has really kind of raised the bar of the discussions. And, and ultimately, that's what's, uh, what attracted me to, uh, to the Urban Studies program up at uh, SFU in the first place. Uh, also very happy to, to welcome everyone here to, uh, to the city of, of New Westminster. Uh, you know, we're a, a relatively small municipality in Metro Vancouver, but I think we're, we're a little bit unique in that uh, unlike uh, some other suburban communities in, in the region, uh, you know, we very much face the big challenges that Vancouver or the city of Surrey face. You know, whether we're dealing with transportation, whether we're doing the housing, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to think of an urban issue that isn't a big issue here in the city of New Westminster. And, and I think that really comes from the fact that we're the oldest city in the region, uh, and uh, which provides us with great opportunities, but also provides us with some interesting and, uh, and challenging, uh, challenging urban issues. So I'm, I'm very excited to, to be able to participate in today's discussion about, uh, about our, our region. Uh, you know, I think thinking back over the years, we've done some, some incredible things in, in Metro Vancouver and, and things that I think uh, we really do need to be, be proud about. Uh, you know, I think sometimes we in this region tend to focus on, on the negatives and some of the challenges we have and, and forget about some of the incredible accomplishments uh, that we really have done here in, uh, in Metro Vancouver. And, and in many respects, Metro Vancouver is a leader across North America and the world in, in so many different ways. Um, but we do face challenges, uh, you know, namely, I, uh, off the top of my head, think of issues of transportation, uh, public transit, uh, I think of affordable housing, and, uh, you know, there are definitely some struggles that we really do need to, to work out in, in our region. Now, I don't want you to hold this against me, but uh, I, I'm a huge Denver Broncos fan, and uh, last fall, uh, I, I had an opportunity to, to go down to uh, Denver to go see a game, and what really struck me was uh, that I wasn't expecting was a city that really has their act together. Uh, they were doing so many really interesting things from, you know, all the way from public art to incredible expansion of their, their public transit system. And, uh, you know, I was sitting there kind of not expecting this, but seeing these, these incredible accomplishments that, uh, that the city for, you know, at least had been off my radar in terms of a, a really good urban city. Um, now, just past last week, we had some officials up from, uh, from Denver visiting uh, and, and kind of sharing their experience on economic development and how they've made some, some you know, their accomplishments over, over the past years to, to really become what they have. And what, a, a comment that really struck me was uh, when they said, our opportunity was our dysfunction. And to me, I kind of scratched my head on that at first going, well, I'm, I'm not quite sure what that, that means. But really what, uh, what that uh, saying was really getting at was dysfunction can be fixed. And if you can unlock your, your dysfunction in your region, that's where the magic happens. So in Denver, just like we have here in, in Metro Vancouver, you had multiple municipalities with different priorities and different perspectives, not always on the same page. You had uh, you know, a, a big metropolitan region, not always on the same page as, uh, as their state government. 
But ultimately, when they were able to put that aside, that's when things really started to, to come to be. That's where they were able to compete and get some of the, you know, the greatest per capita funding in public transit federally than any other city in, in the United States. And, and I looked at that parallel and thought, you know, I can really see a lot of similarities to, to what we're dealing with uh, here, in, here in Metro Vancouver. So I think that's probably a, a good segue into, into my introduction to our, our keynote speaker. Uh, definitely someone who is uh, uh, no stranger to the Metro Vancouver region, uh, the former mayor of the city, city of Langley, uh, and, uh, and has now moved on to, to the provincial government uh, and, and done a number of ministries, uh, has someone who has really developed a reputation, who, uh, who is given some of the more challenging projects and challenging assignments uh, that our provincial government has, and his latest assignment is, uh, is certainly uh, quite, quite fits that bill quite a bit. So it's my pleasure to, uh, to introduce the Honourable Minister of Community Sport and Cultural Development and the Minister responsible for TransLink, uh, Peter Fassbender. Well, thank you, Jonathan, and no, I didn't bring a PowerPoint. Uh, I've learned that if you can't survive without a PowerPoint, then uh, you better think what you're doing. So uh, what you've got is me. And um, first of all, I'm delighted to be here in, in this great city. I was telling Jonathan 49 years ago when my wife and I were married, uh, we lived in New Westminster for five years in a one-bedroom apartment and started our journey together to where we are today, and uh, I'm absolutely delighted to be in this great community. Uh, it has a rich heritage, it has an amazing future, and I believe that. Uh, this building is a testament to the vision that this city has and has been fulfilling over many years, and uh, I think you'd all agree this is a great facility. And again, uh, when you see the transformation that's taking place in New Westminster, we're also on the traditional territories, as you know, of the Kikwat Nation, and uh, we always celebrate our First Nations uh, communities and our partners uh, because they have contributed to bring us to where we are, and we are at a place with the truth and reconciliation that we're on a path to healing and also to engaging our First Nations in a much more uh, meaningful way than they ever have had in the past and as a government uh, we're delighted to do that. I also bring you greetings from Premier Clark. Uh, I told her I was coming here and I said uh, I'm going to mention the fact that you know she gave me a pretty easy portfolio when I first got elected called education and uh, had a, a, a very easy journey to, uh, to the conclusion that we came to in our negotiations. But there's a classic example where what we wanted to do was to get to the solution, not focus on the problems. And to have the longest negotiated settlement, albeit with uh, some labor disruption for a period of time, the point is we got to a negotiated settlement. It's the longest in the history of the province. And now we can really focus on what it should be, and that's the transformation of education for all of our young people, whether it's children or grandchildren. And so. Um, I was uh, honored to be asked to be a part of that journey, and then when she said, well, now I'm going to give you a rest, I would like you to take over community sport and cultural development, I give, to give out gaming grants and go to cultural events, and then she said, oh, yes, I'd also like you to take over the responsibility for TransLink. And uh, I actually was quite delighted uh, to do that, because I've sat at the mayor's council table, uh, I was an elected mayor in the region. Uh, I've seen the good, the bad, the ugly, and every other adjective you might want to add, but I will say this in starting my comments, and that is that we are blessed to live in one of the greatest provinces in the country and one of the greatest countries in the world. And as Jonathan said, sometimes we focus on what's wrong, but we forget to talk about what's right. And our transit system in this region is one of the most effective and efficient in the world. When we have people coming in from other jurisdictions, they look at it and they look at on-time performance per uh, kilometer uh, costs for moving people and goods and services in the region, we stand up as one of the more efficient. 
Uh, we don't often hear that, and I think we do need to celebrate the good things that we are doing. Uh, but that doesn't suggest that we don't have challenges, and I welcome Simon Fraser in doing these kinds of forums. And, um, you know, people say to me, do you worry about going to these kinds of things because there might be people there who disagree with you? And I say, no, uh, what, I, what I celebrate is democracy. And uh, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, but Winston Churchill was once asked, what's wrong with democracy? And he said, it's democracy but it's the best system we've got. And so I have lived through uh, at the local level when I was a school trustee many years ago as a counselor and then a mayor for three terms, differences of opinion when it comes to uh, what the path forward should be. And what I do know is that in a lot of cases, uh, we're all experts depending on what our background is. Some have degrees in urban planning, some have degrees in all kinds of things, some have just life experience, and we all have a perspective. And I think that's a healthy thing. The challenge is, I can tell you, I remember when I first ran for elected office, uh, when I was running, people said, you're one of us and we like your ideas and go for it. The day after the election, I was now one of them. Uh, when I was a local mayor sitting around the table, I was one of us, and then when I ran for the province and I got elected, I was now, I am now one of them. And that's okay, because you make those conscious decisions as to what you're moving into. But I do want to thank Simon Fraser as an institution that I have been a big supporter of in all of my life in this region, um, and seeing the tremendous work that's being done and the people that are graduating and are making contributions, uh, not only to our region, our province, but our country and the world. And the alumni from Simon Fraser are making an impact around the world. So I wanna say to Andrew and his team, uh, you're doing a great job. You know I've said that before. I'm not being paid to say that, I believe it. So what are the issues that we face when it comes to, and, and, and the title of this conference, we are always changing. I think anyone who says we're there is kidding themselves because the reality is the world's changing. Uh, the Premier's given me another small task to talk about a thing called Uber or ride sharing or uh, Airbnb, and I'm out uh, going around the province talking to all kinds of stakeholders. And the one thing I recognize clearly is the change that happens every single day. And we need to be changing, not waiting for the aha moment and saying we've made it because we'll never be there. We're always on that journey. But I think our focus has to be what are the steps we need to do. And as Jonathan said, we need to find a path to collaboration. None of us does it alone. As the Minister of Communities, there's 170 local governments and regional districts as part of that local government construct that we have, and uh, we need to find ways where we can work together. And constitutionally, we have our orders of government, and we all know that, but that isn't really the issue. It isn't about how it was constructed, is how does it work together? And one of the biggest challenges for us is finding that path, as Jonathan said, to be able to sit down and find solutions rather than being focused on the problems. The problems are easy to identify quite often because everybody will tell you about them. I can assure you the emails I get, I'm clearly being told by people what the problems are and all I need to do is just fix it. As Joy said, if I could write a check, everything would be wonderful. Well, you know what? It wouldn't be we still have and will have challenges as we manage budgets, as we manage uh, the vision and the growth for the future. But doing that requires us to be willing to challenge each other. And uh, you know, and, and I'm gonna talk about TransLink because I'm sure it's high on everybody's list. Uh, I heard it before. Um, you know, the governance structure that we have today has been changed. And it was changed originally from Metro appointing all of the directors to TransLink to a system that, uh, and at that time was felt to have challenges. And anybody that suggests to you that it was a perfect system and it was just working so well when the mayors were totally in control, I will tell you as a person who lived in the region, that's not true. It wasn't, it had lots of challenges. There were 
times where they couldn't come to agreement and somebody else had to maybe step in or to create an environment where they could get there. So there is no governance system in my view that I have seen that is perfect. But I do believe we have the opportunity to make what we have work. And if it doesn't work, then we need to be willing to look at what we might do to modify it. And I've been very clear at this stage in my mandate, I am not prepared to change governance again because people think that if we go back to the way it was, it's gonna be better. I am prepared to talk about what we can do to change governance to make it work better, but we better have a very clear plan because I have to go and defend whatever I'm prepared to recommend because I believe it's the right thing. But right now we have a unique opportunity in the region and that is a federal government that has come out with significant resources they want to invest in the region and we don't want to lose that window of opportunity. So I've said to the Mayor's Council, I've said to the Board of TransLink, I've said to uh, our provincial government and my colleagues, let's get on with getting to what we need to do in the short term and if through that we find a better model, I'm prepared to talk about that, I'm prepared to look at it, but just changing the model isn't necessarily gonna fix the challenges that we've got in the short term. So we need to work together and that is one of the things that I've learned in the years that I've been involved in local government and as a volunteer in communities, I was the president of the BC Sports Federation many years ago. And there was lots of politics and still is in sports. I've lived in that environment where those dynamics come into play and, and you have to deal with it. But what I want to do as minister responsible for communities, sport, cultural development and TransLink is look at what solutions do we need to find. And am I naive enough to believe it's just as simple as writing another check or the province putting more money in? It's not that easy, folks. It, it, it isn't. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be having those debates in a respectful manner with each other. And I think one of the challenges we've had in the region is we've been spending a lot of time blaming each other for what's wrong as opposed to focusing on what is it we need to do together. And that is a truism around council tables, around regional district tables. Uh, when I was the mayor, my biggest job was not trying to figure out if the staff recommendation on where the sewer line should go, but how do I make council work together as a body for the best interests of the community? And I feel the same thing now in my role in the provincial government is how can I work with all the parties that I have 175 different communities in the province and I'm dealing with water issues in Kelowna, water issues on Vancouver Island with Union Bay and a, a water district and, and all of those things. And what I want to do is focus on solutions, not stay mired in the problems. And to me, any community, any region that is in transition, the people who stand up and run for elected office or volunteer or provide educational leadership need to focus on that path to solutions and showing people how they can work together to find those solutions. That's my job, that is what I'm committed to doing and uh, I know I don't have all the answers. I'm very clear what I know and what I don't know but I do know this, that we need to stop blaming each other and start talking about how we can work better together. Now that's easy to say, it's not easy to do. Partisan politics gets involved. I've been around long enough, I know how that works. Um, I've been called names by other people who have different political persuasions. And, and I always push back and say, rather than calling me an idiot, why don't you talk to me about what your recommendations are that I should consider? Because I'm prepared to listen. But the minute you call me down personally or make it a personal thing, conversation stops. And so what I've always tried to do at my council table and I'm doing now in my role in government is to try and find a way to have meaningful and positive conversation even though there's a lot of disagreement that's embedded in that. And so I think when we look at this region, we look at governance. Uh, is it the best governance structure? 
It's the best one we got at the moment because it's the one that's in place, so let's try and make it work. And if it isn't, then we'll look at what might make it better. But I think the issue is what the taxpayers, what the citizens of our communities expect of leaders is to lead. And the way you lead is by talking to each other, by debating the issues, not being afraid to disagree, but doing it respectfully. And, and that's what I think is at the bedrock of any relationship at any level within governments, even in your own home. If you don't do it respectfully in your own home with your kids or your, your significant other or whatever the case, whatever your dynamic is, if you don't do it with respect, then that becomes the issue and you lose sight of the goal that you have. So in terms of TransLink governance, uh, we have a window of opportunity. We need to move together to take advantage of the federal funding that's available to us. Um, we need to, and I took a, a step immediately when I was appointed. Since the governance structure was changed by Kevin Falcon and the government of the day, there was two seats on the TransLink board that were there for the government that had never been filled. And my position when I was given the responsibility is I said, how can we have meaningful discussion if we don't fulfill our responsibility by putting two people there that, that can contribute? So I appointed Murray Dinwiddie, who was the former city manager in Surrey, and Jim Chu, the former chief constable of the city of Vancouver, two very capable people, understand the regional dynamics and all of those things, and I think they're making a great contribution. They're not the puppets of the government. They are there to contribute at the board table with the people they sit with. And yes, I talk to them all the time about provincial perspectives and so on, so they can reflect that. But they are there to contribute to the whole, for the whole region. Um, as you know, the rest of the board is appointed by the Mayor's Council through a screening process. Gordon, who's here, uh, uh, was chairing that, uh, that panel for a period of time. Uh, they used to come to the Mayor's Council, say, what kind of expertise do you think we should have at the table? Where are the gaps? Um, they went away, they used a professional headhunter, came back with a list of names, and ultimately the mayors either voted for them or voted against them, depending, and majority ruled, and, and they appoint the rest of the directors. Um, is it the best system? I don't know that yet. It's, it is the only system we've got until we change it or have a better system. That's what we're gonna work with. But I believe this, transportation is at the foundation of any healthy, successful community. And its impact is on business in terms of goods and services movement in the region, moving people, education, uh, to provide access for students to get to the educational institutions of their choice, all of those things. It's a huge contributor to healthcare. And uh, a good transportation system, if you talk to people like Larry Frank from UBC, sorry, Andrew, UBC is another one of those great institutions, but he talks about the health impact of a good transportation system. So we need to keep all of those things in mind moving ahead. I will tell you this that uh, we've just recently, as an example, uh, brought in uh, uh, expense limits for municipal elections, which we have never had before. Uh, I'm being criticized in certain quarters that I didn't do enough, we didn't get rid of this or that, uh, but it is a major step forward after five years of consultation with UBCM and local governments, and uh, when the bill was put on the floor, I was criticized that it didn't do everything else that other people thought it should. But you know what? It is a step in the right direction and we'll evaluate it through the next season. So there's lots of things that we're doing. But I will say this to you, to all of you in this room who have an interest on the transformation of this region. We need to hear your perspectives. We need to hear your ideas. Harold Steves and I will disagree on a number of things, but I listen to what Harold has to say. I know how passionate he is about protection of agricultural land and so on. We may not agree on the path to get to where we need to go, but that's good. I will hear what he has to say. Uh, but when I'm put in a position where ultimately I have to make a decision, ladies and gentlemen, one of the things about 
governance and everything else is at some point someone has to make a decision. Because if you wait to build consensus where everybody agrees, you'll never get anything done because you'll never get there. There will never be uh, agreement on all fronts. But I think if we truly run for elected office, if you look at people who are running, people who have contributions to make, you have to say, is your motive for the best for the whole, or is it a self-serving? And then we get into that issue of respect. And, and I know that Harold's position on issues is because Harold's passionate about it because of his background. I respect that, even though I may not agree on everything. But I respect his right to stand up and, and to say it. So I could go on. I could spend a lot of time talking about TransLink. But I will tell you this. My goal as minister responsible is to find a solution that will meet the needs of this region and deliver a world-class transportation system that is going to set this region where it needs to be in the future. That's my goal. Will I get there? I don't know. I'm just going to give it my best shot and work as hard as I can and uh, come to things like this and share my perspective and then go to other things where I hear other people's perspectives. So with that said, I think I have a couple of minutes for a couple of questions. Where's Joy when you need her? Uh, good morning, Minister Fassbender. My name is Sherry and I'm a student from SFU School of Public Policy. I'm wondering if you could share your thoughts on how we can balance regional and provincial interests and priorities in land use planning. And that would include transportation. So looking at some recent transportation investments, including the South Razor Parameter, the Massey Bridge, while they're intended to relieve congestion, um, some would also argue that they don't meet our long-term regional strategy and might constrain our ability to plan around uh, our regional goals as um, in the regional growth strategy. Um, so in this regard, are the land use priorities of the region sometimes different from the provincial interest as a whole? And moving forward, how can we reconcile these different interests? Thank you. Well, that's, that's a big question, but I, I will say this, that mm -hmm. The province has its responsibility to look at the priorities that we've identified through all of the means that we have, the research that is done by the province, by the team that we have in the various ministries, uh, by the relationship we have with local governments and the time we spend talking about that. Um, I know, for example, and Harold would uh, tell you this, that he doesn't think there's been enough consultation on the Massey replacement, and he's entitled to that opinion. I happen to disagree with that, because when I look at the volumes of work that's been done, the business analysis, the rationale for it, um, you get to a place where the province has to make decisions based on the provincial priorities, but to suggest it was done in isolation of understanding the regional priorities, uh, I was at the table uh, when the regional growth strategy was being debated and, and put together. I sat on that committee at Metro Vancouver. I'm patently aware of even the disagreements that were there to get to the point where we are today, but it is there. And so the provincial government does weigh all of those. Uh, we also look at issues like the seismic integrity of the Dees Tunnel. And uh, the experts that have told us that we don't need the big one for the tunnel to become obsolete because it'll fall apart. That's an issue that the province has to take seriously in terms of safety of, of uh, the region and of the people in the region. I have to tell you, every time I drive through it, I think to myself, I hope we don't have a quake while I'm in the middle of the tunnel. Uh, but those are all of the things that we have to do. And I think it goes back to what I said is we do the best we can, maybe not enough in some people's view. We may feel the same way about uh, issues that are brought to our table about the work that's been done. But at some point, someone makes a decision because they believe it is the best, and we're held accountable for that decision. Uh, we have a, a date uh, next year that that will be part of the process for us. 
And that's the beauty or the challenge of democracy. Uh, but the reality is we do look at how it fits with the regional context. We do look at how that fits in the overall plan. But as the province of British Columbia, our lens has to be the provincial lens with all of those things as input to the decisions we make. Uh, first of all, thank you, Minister, for uh, being here with us today. Um, I think as that question showcases, there's um, a lot of different opinions floating around in the room as to what our priorities are as a region and what the, the provincial um, priorities are. Um, and there's clearly some big gaps there. So I wonder, rather than talking about the things that we disagree with, um, I'm curious if you can lay out really quickly, um, thinking about the future governance structure of TransLink, things like that. Um, we've heard today already that TransLink inspired a lot of other regions um, around the world, actually, with how efficient it is, and, and you mentioned at the get-go. Uh, that I'm really curious if you can speak to um, places that inspire you, that you think um, British Columbia could be learning from, particularly uh, when it comes to TransLink and transportation governance. Um, where is a place that does it well that maybe we can be taking some ideas from, because I'm sure you've been looking at a lot of these things uh, in this process. Where's somewhere that you're, you're interested in that you think um, Vancouver and British Columbia can be learning from? Thank you. There's a number. There's Denver, as was mentioned. I've seen, I've been there, I've had a chance to tour. Australia and how they use the water as part of their transportation network that I don't think we do as good a job here, both in terms of goods movement strategy and also potentially perhaps moving people. But you know, uh, in Australia, their harbor is quite a bit different than our harbor in terms of Sydney and how it's surrounded. So you can't just take saying that will work equally here but there are elements of it, and that, that is always the challenge. So I look at that. I look at what London has done on things like congestion pricing and how they use that as a disincentive for people to drive their cars into the core of the city. Uh, I've had a chance to be in Germany and France. I've looked at the intermodal um, uh, opportunities that you see in Europe that you don't have here the same way. Um, so I've looked at a number of those things, and, and I spent a lot of time online um, looking at different markets and different issues. The new CEO for TransLink, Kevin Desmond, who comes from the Seattle-Tacoma area, they've been through a lot of challenges. They brought in uh, a, a, a proposal on sales tax, which got defeated. The first time then got approved, and they're using that to fund some of their transportation. So we look at a lot of those, but I think major uh, communities like London, like uh, Sydney, Australia, like Denver, Calgary, and I've looked at the ad grade rail system that they have and the pros and cons, what's working, what's not. But there are a number of things, but I think what I ultimately come back to is we need a made in Metro and a made in British Columbia solution for anything that we do. And we look at all of those inputs. Okay, thank you, Minister Fassbender. Uh, I'm afraid we're gonna have to call it close in the interest of, of time. You. So I'll just mention that this is the fourth annual Rethinking the Region event, and we'll be very pleased to provide you with the outcome of our deliberations this thank year. You. Thank, thank you. you.